going to talk about tarsal tunnel syndrome and how we can work on evaluating these and using special tests. Your tarsal tunnel is going to run posterior to your medial malleolus and you have lots of structures that run here including your Tom, Dick and Harry, so your posterior tibialis, your flexor digitorum longus and your flexor hallucis longus but you also have your tibial nerve, your posterior tibial nerve that's gonna run through here and you can get a pulse here, your posterior tibial pulse. So assessing pulses are pretty easy. You would just lightly press, but when we're gonna talk about tarsal tunnel syndrome, we're gonna talk about impingement of any one of these potential structures and they can result in pain, numbness, weakness, tingling, you kind of name it. And so the very first one is Tonell's sign. And this is something that you probably learned about in the upper extremity. So it's just when you're going to be tapping a nerve. And when you do that, what you're going to do is just take their ankle, go on the posterior aspect of that uh, medial malleolus. And then again, they should have already had pain or something before. So we're talking about really assessing the posterior tibial nerve. And what you would do is tap on that space and if they uh, report reproduction of symptoms then that is a positive test now again they should already be complaining of these symptoms not normally because if you catch a nerve just right it's going to shoot symptoms down anyway the next test is this triple compression stress test and they need to be up in a long sitting position and so what you would do is you're going to take their ankle and you're going to stress that part in three different ways. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to put these posterior areas into plantar flexion. So you're gonna be compressing them in this way. Then you're going to invert their foot, which compresses it even more. And then you're gonna take these fingers and you're gonna put direct compression on those. And you're going to hold it for a period of time. And you can also do tapping on it if you need to. But really the idea is that you're applying compression to it. And again, they should already have symptoms and it can be uncomfortable if they didn't have symptoms, but it should be a reproduction of their symptoms. And the specificity for this one is really good. The last one is the dorsiflexion eversion test. And when we do this one, it's kind of similar to some of the other ankle tests that we talked about. But what you're going to do is take their ankle and you're going to maximally dorsiflex and then you're going to evert their foot. So now we're really putting all these structures on a big, big stretch. And then you're going to actually extend their toes. So you might actually take their whole foot and like take your whole forearm. Can you slide your butt that way just a little bit? So we're like this. Let me see if I can get here. So this whole foot is up like this and out. So this whole medial area should be super stretched. And then what you're going to do is tap on this back area for five to 10 seconds to see if that is going to reproduce their symptoms. This particular test has actually pretty good sensitivity and specificity to see if they're going to have problems. So the difference between this one and the second one is, the second one is we're compressing everything. And this third one, the dorsiflexion eversion test, so we're really bringing it out in the eversion is we're stretching everything. But either way, we're trying to see if we're reproducing their symptoms that they came in as, as complaints.